Hey, Tide Cats fans, Louie B here, getting set for the CFL Draft this Thursday, and there's a big special on TS 1150, and here to talk about it, we have the program director of TS 1150, Mike Neighbors, and one half of Marshall Mello, Marshall Ferguson. Gentlemen, thanks so much. Great to see you guys. Great to see you, Louie B. Thanks for having us, Lou. Well, we'll start with you, Mike. Uh, this is now six years that Tie Cats and TS 1150 have been, uh, have been partners. Uh, it's been pretty special six years in that time, eh? It, it really has been. It's been a fantastic uh, partnership between the team and, and TSN 1150, and uh, and just and and just the full team, right? I mean, everybody at the TICAT offices who we're always working in conjunction with, and we've got a great relationship with them, and uh, we've got some great plans. And of course, over the course of that six years, the TICATs have just gotten better and better and better. So, who isn't excited about finally getting this season off the ground? Uh, Marsh, now uh, year five of being the play-by-play voice of the uh, the Hamilton Tiger Cats. I mean, first of all, I remember you five years ago. Uh, can can you imagine that you'd be at this point right now, uh, and just everything you're doing, and just just how quickly these five years have gone by? Yeah, I was actually super excited to be able to have uh, it be my 100th game doing play-by-play. It was supposed to be on Labor Day of this year. That seems to have been delayed uh, for the time <laughs> being, but uh, I do think that it's it's an honor necessarily to, to call games the Tie Cats. It's pretty cool to look back at the history of the organization, the people that have done the job, the number of players that have come through the Tie Cats that just in the time that I've been there, let alone in the, the long tenured history of them. So uh, to be able to see that many people come through and call their games, I mean, it's when you and I started working together in Radio Lou, it was Eric Harris, and we were like, oh, he's decent. He's been in the NFL for like three, four years now. <laughs> and good stuff. So I always wonder every year that we start up, who's the guy that's coming in that we take for granted that's going to be an NFL star or a CFL all-star or be in the CFL, be a star, go to the NFL, be a star, come back and be a CFL star like Delvin yeah. Rowe is now with the Tigers. Yeah. So uh, it's, it's pretty amazing to be able to see the guys that come through the league. Yeah, a guy like Braylon Addison last year going into the last season, he thought he could be one of those guys. And sure enough, now with the Vikings. Uh, Mike, you guys have always prided yourselves on being a CFL heavy station. And that's something that's going to continue this Thursday with the with the draft special. Uh, Mike, why has it been so important for, for the brand of TSN 1150 to be such a passionate cheerleader for this league? Well, first and foremost, it stemmed from our relationship with the Thai Cats, and 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 them being our, our absolutely most important partner. But also, uh, the position of our station, right? TSN 1150 uh, in the Golden Horseshoe, where we are, we broadcast right into Toronto. Uh, we have a beautiful, big, massive signal, and it really was the CFL was was not being as well covered by the other uh, radio uh, sports radio stations uh, for for various reasons, and and we just really felt like it was just going to be sort of our mountain to own. And, uh, and we've done our very best to try and do that with the help of Marshall, with uh, your help over the years, Lou, with lots of great people. Uh, we've been able to establish that we're CFL first and then uh, all the other sports come second. And uh, the draft show this Thursday's a classic example where we're going all night. Uh, we'll seven till midnight. Uh, we'll be uh, covering the de- draft deep and we'll be the only place you can get the later rounds uh, because that's how committed we are to the CFL product. And Marsh, this is something you've been fighting for for a long time, I know to be able to be the exclusive home of the CFL draft. This is something for you personally, this year's draft, how long have you been planning this? I have to think at least two years, right? Two <laughs> well, years. I was gonna say the, the biggest reason I think we became a CFL station Louis, is because Mike was dumb enough to hire me. So uh, I think <laughs> that, that played into it a little bit, but I would say uh, the way that the draft has been covered, I think that there's a lot of room for growth there, not just from ourselves or the TSN brand, but nationally, like this is, it's such a cool opportunity to be able to celebrate the people that have done amazing things over the last three, four, five years of their careers, whether that be north or south of the border. And so, yeah, I've, I've wanted to be able to have something like this. I never know what shape it's going to take because I think every year it's so different, but every year that we take another step forward, we cover another round or we bring in more guests or we find a way to get alumni from the Thai Cats involved more in the show and they become kind of a celebration of the guys that they're welcoming into the Thai Cats. There's just so many different angles that I think you can cover in a draft because the draft, yeah, it's important. It's great to be able to see people come into the organization and maybe they turn into great long-term players. Maybe they don't, but it's really just an excuse to be able to celebrate the league and the game and the teams and the city. And it makes you wonder what the roster will look like and could a guy that you draft tonight be starting for you on a great cup game. And I just think that all of that plays in. And that's why I love it. And that's why I think it's going to be a great night on Thursday. Speaking of that, the Ticats do have two first round picks on Thursday. When you look at what the Ticats may do, their holes, what they need positionally, 
And when you look at the 2020 draft class, Marsh, you know this class well. What do you think the Ticats night looks like on Thursday? Yeah, that Johnny Menzel trade just keeps on giving, don't it? Uh, that <laughs> second first round uh, pick that they've been able to acquire there, I think that's uh, it's pretty amazing to see. And oh, by the way, they get another first round pick next year. So I'll be making the exact same joke 365 days from now. Uh, but I, I do look at it as being receiver, probably a need for the Thai Cats, And that's a good thing because there's a receiver from Virginia, who is, of course, the brother of uh, O'Shea Brissett, who plays for the Toronto Raptors. Dijon Brissett, who's coming out of Virginia this year, I think he's a top end talent. Um, if they would like to, they could reunite Marcus Davis, who spent last year on the practice roster with Travel Pinto. They were teammates at UBC. Um, you could also end up going with a big body receiver from Nevada. There's Brendan O'Leary Orange, uh, who I know is very highly thought of. There's also a Hamilton native who is a U Sports guy and Tyler Chernowski. So there's lots of options there that they can play with. And then the great thing I think about having a second first round pick for the Ticats is what Winnipeg did last year. Fourth overall, they went offensive line. Fifth overall, they went defensive line. And so when you have two picks, you don't have to double up and say, well, hopefully one of them turns out. The quality is so high at that point in the draft in the first round that you can draft two different positional needs, maybe receiver and O-line, maybe receiver and D-line, maybe receiver and linebacker, whatever you want to do there. And then you can rely on those guys being a big part of your roster going into this season, leading into next season. And you think really three years down the road, how do we turn them into a star? And I think that's the mindset that they've had with Brandon Revenberg and Darius Sirocco, uh, Mike Daly when he was drafted to the Ticats, Cordy Steven going way back when he was drafted. That's always been the mentality is let's not just get guys that'll be good for a year or two. Let's make people who are going to be long-term Ticats. And when you got two first round picks, you have a chance to be able to do that twice in the same year. And again, twice next year with that Manziel trade continuing to give. And that's an amazing thing to be able to build your national roster. Uh, Mike Neighbors, same question. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I just announced the names at the stadium, baby. You guys right. pick, it's, you it's, pick it's, them, send them my way. <laughs> it's going to be a while until we, uh, we hear your booming voice at uh, Tim Hortons Field. So why don't you give us one uh, big first down Tiger Cats for us here while we're here. First down! Tiger Cats! I don't know if you blew out my speakers or <laughs> microphone, but one of them is done. Gentlemen, one. It's, it's so good to see both your faces. I uh, can't wait to see you guys back at the stadium. Thanks so much for doing this. Great Thanks. to work with you again, Lou. Awesome. Talk soon, guys.